Okay, uh, good win for us. Um, much needed win. And, uh, you know, the way our players have, have uh, fought and uh, competed uh, all season long, it, it was, uh, we were due to come out on the right end of one of those uh, uh, close ones. And, and so very proud of the way the guys finished and hung in there from start to finish, as they have all year, as I said. Uh, biggest difference in the game or the biggest reason for our success, in my opinion, was our ability to run the football efficiently and against a very good front seven of Stanford. And that really was the... Uh, in my assessment, the biggest uh, factor in being able to win the game is, is to put up the, the rushing numbers that we did. And uh, offensive line, you know, obviously a huge reason for that. Bubba Poole ran the ball exceptionally well. Uh, Coach Erickson and Coach Johnson's scheme with the, with the bubble screens uh, on the perimeter uh, loosened up the front and, and softened things up in there for us a little bit. Uh, receivers blocking downfield were key to making those bubble screens go. We did a great job with our receivers blocking that up. And uh, Travis did a great job of putting the ball right on the money. And that's not an easy throw to make. It looks, it may look easy, but to put the ball right where it needs to be in stride uh, without, uh, you know, with very little margin for error is really the key to the play and to get that thing underway. And so Travis did, a, like I said, an outstanding job of, of managing those throws. And so. Uh, so a lot of other good things. Uh, Andy Phillips continues to be a weapon for us. Uh, hit two big field goals. One was about 48 yards uh, there in fourth quarter, third, four, late third, early fourth quarter, which, which extended the lead to I think it was 27-14 at that time. And then uh, defensively, outstanding plan by Coach Sataki and the rest of the defensive staff. Uh, really only gave up two scores. Uh, the first drive of the game, which uh, that's twice now, uh, two games in a row we've given up touchdowns on the first drive, so we've got to get, get that corrected. But uh, other than that, there wasn't another offensive touchdown, but touchdown by Stanford until uh, about midway through the fourth quarter. So, so a lot of positives to build on. Now, this game you know, is, is big, like I said, but uh, it can be magnified if we're able to build on it and, and uh, do some good things going forward. Uh, playing a good Arizona team this week, uh, Kadeem Carey, one of the best backs in the country, uh, gave us fits last year, and uh, you know, we've got to try to have a plan to try to to uh, not let him do to us what he did to us last year. So questions? Coach, you bring up that first drive touchdown for Stanford. Was Is that an issue where you guys made adjustments to shut him down after that, or was it just settling the nerves? I think the, the latter, settling the nerves. And really, there was the two big plays that uh, were the catalyst for the drive is the, we missed a tackle early in the drive. I think it was maybe the first play of the game. And then uh, we blew a coverage. We turned a, a man coverage. They ran a, a cluster formation. We had it uh, defended as far as structurally with our alignment, exactly how we had practiced it. But then one of our DBs lost his eyes and got uh, looking back at the quarterback, lost track of his man, and the guy came wide open. And so those two plays really were the, the things that did us in on that first drive. So it wasn't necessary to do anything adjustment-wise after that. It's just do the things we've been practicing uh, during the course of the week. Kyle, it says here this is the <coughs> your latest uh, road opener out of state since 1947. Is there any logistical concerns going on the road for the first time, getting a team on an airplane for the first time in the season, things like that that make going out of state a little different? Well, I think it's a little concerned for the players that have never done that. I don't think it matters when that happens during the course of the season. I don't think that's relevant. But uh, our guys that have never been on a, a Division One road trip, which there's a – quite a few guys on this team that will be in that category. It's important that they uh, handle themselves the right way and understand how we operate. And, and so I think that's a bigger issue than the timing of it. Okay. Can you expand a little bit? You said Louis Sakota was around <coughs> last week. Mm -hmm. And just Andy Phillips being perfect this late in the season, uh, I take it you're not that surprised. Well, we're, we're uh, just uh, elated about what he's given us and what he's done for us. He's 11 for 11 on the year, hasn't missed a PAT. So he's, he's just been uh, lights out and that's something that you know has been a, a big difference for us I mean it's made a, a difference in uh, in the uh, complexion of the games and and uh, we hope it continues coach can you you comment on just the state of the uh, the pac-12 as a whole it looks like a, a, a very strong conference at the top but as you guys proved on Saturday it also looks like 
you know, the conference really has some depth. I mean, mm -hmm. when you talk about, you know, going up against some of the other conferences in the country, where do you got, where do you think that you guys stand just as a, as a league as a whole? Well, I think we're right up there, uh, certainly in the top two or three, without a doubt. I don't think that's even a question. And uh, as I've said over and over, the conference today at this point in time is, is much better than when we entered it. You know, we entered it through, uh, just uh, a couple of two and a half years ago, and, and it's uh, much more competitive top to bottom. I think that, uh, yeah, and for really on offense, you look at some of the offenses, there's a lot of prolific offenses in this conference. It seems like every week we're going up against an offense that's, that's ranked very highly nationally, and so it's very challenging. And, uh, you know, I think that, uh, like I mentioned, we're certainly, you know, the SEC's in the conversation. Obviously, they're always in the conversation. I think we're right up there in that, uh, in that group. Kyle, as big as the win was on Saturday, and as much as people want to keep talking about it, is the most important thing you can do right now to forget about it? Well, yeah, I think that uh, going forward, you know, what we want to do is accentuate to the players the reasons for the win, you know, the great week of practice, their focus, their film study, everything that went into winning the football game, and uh, emphasize to them that that's what needs to happen uh, again, you know, we got to be able to duplicate that as far as our preparation, and that that's something that, uh, and we haven't had a team, uh, or this team this year has not had a problem preparing, uh, but some weeks obviously are a little bit better than others, and last week was outstanding, and and uh, just instill the belief in them that the preparation is uh, absolutely key to your success, or lack thereof. Could you talk a little bit about the play you're getting right now from Nate Orchard and Trevor Riley off the edge? And if this is what maybe you – I mean, I think this was the first game. Maybe they both really had monster games at the same time. And is this kind of what you expected coming in? It's what we hoped for, and especially Nate. I thought Nate really played well, and probably his best game as a Ute uh, was this game uh, past Saturday. Uh, defensive line as a whole is is doing very good things. Yeah, I was very optimistic about those guys from the uh, way back in fall camp, saying even though we lost Star and the Kruger brothers and some really good players, that we expected to have one of the best, if not the best, defensive fronts in the conference. And so far through the first half of the season, we're leading the league in sacks. We're playing the run exceptionally well. Uh, Tenny Palapoy, you know, is a big reason for that. We mentioned Trevor and and. Uh, Nate, but Tenny, Tenny is really the anchor of the interior guys. And so it's a, uh, a situation where we're getting outstanding play up front, and it needs to continue. And, and to answer your question, yeah, we, we envisioned getting good, good pressure off the edge from, uh, from Nate and Trevor, and they've given us just that. You've seen a lot of different quarterbacks um, league-wide and even in non-conference this year. Uh, how about a thought on B.J. Denker, the quarterback? He's not what you would call, I guess, this year the traditional Pac-12 quarterback. He's not the guy that maybe sits back there and throws the ball a ton. He did put up good numbers against SC, but maybe a little bit more like some of the quarterbacks you saw in the non-conference season. Well, he's very, very good fit for their scheme. He runs the ball exceptionally well. And for what Coach uh, Rich Rod likes to do, I think he's uh, you know, very, very, uh, uh, you know, like I said, a good fit and uh, able to do the things that are required of a quarterback in that system. And so he's another guy that's mobile. Tough to tackle. He's fast, uh, and he does throw the ball with uh, efficiency. So another dual threat quarterback, just like we see almost every single week. Coach, we saw Bubba Poole carry the ball primarily uh, against Stanford. Is that something that you just you're going to game to game to see who's in the rhythm, who has the uh, kind of the mojo as far as the running back uh, carrying? Yeah, the ball? you know we talked about this last week and. and Pretty much the same mindset. If we get a guy that's the, uh, you know, the hot back, I guess you can call him, and is, and is gaining, uh, making the big runs and gaining the yards, we're going to stick with that guy. We supplemented him with a few runs from Lucky, who also, who came in and did a really nice job. Uh, a lot of it has to do with the week prac the, the practice week leading into the game, uh, making sure that we can count on the guy not to make mental mistakes and do the right things. That that uh, also goes into the equation of how many reps you're going to get. But in this particular game, Bubba started out extremely productive and stayed that way the entire game. So we just spelled him really for uh, to get him a little bit of rest uh, and really no other reason. And then the uh, biggest difference between Travis Wilson against UCLA, Stanford, the illness or you know, just kind of luck? No, we're not going to let the illness ever be a, an excuse. It's just the ball bounced a little bit funny against UCLA. And, and again, I've, I've said it uh, all last week that the, the six interceptions were uh, at least five of them were, were – uh, 
not bad decisions and not bad throws. And so I think that that uh, him playing the way he did was no surprise to us. We expected him with his competitive nature and his confidence to bounce back and, and play well. And, and fortunately, he did that. He already kind of asked what I was going to ask, but just about the running backs. So Kelvin was their top rusher the week before and didn't play at all. Talk about that maybe also. And then Carl Williams, is it a matter of, has he just been injured? Why he hasn't been playing as much and why he's playing more now? Well, we lost both our tight ends, and so we had to do something. You know, we, had, we lost our front two tight, our, our uh, first two tight ends. Uh, we still like Greg Reese and Siali uh, Fakaloa Tonga, who are the next two, but we felt in this particular week and with what uh, Dennis and Brian wanted to get accomplished that Carl was a good fit. And, uh, you know, he came in and played exceptionally well. I, I was very proud of Carl and, and the way he blocked and the things he gave us. And so it was uh, twofold. One, out of necessity because of the, the uh, tight end situation. And number two, what we thought was going to be a, a uh, pot potential advantage for us in this game. Coach, can you uh, talk a bit more about Kerry and what makes him such a dan dangerous runner? I think he had 204 yards last year against you guys. Yeah, he, he uh, did a number on us. He's, he's a powerful kid. He's not, not the tallest kid in the world, you know, 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 but he's about 210 pounds, extremely explosive, great vision, and, uh, you know, great quickness. You know, he's a, he's a guy that can really change direction and tough to tackle. We've got a you know, we've got to work it out for us, and we've got to do a lot better job than we did last year on him. And I've been impressed with him, you know, since the first time I watched him play. And I think he's one of the, like I said, the top backs in the country. I just had a question about your offensive line. Watching Patassi, one series kind of had a letdown. Mm -hmm. uh, got beat on the <clears throat> edge on a speed rush and then on, back on the inside. And then after that, seemed to just clean things up. I saw a little help from the halfback. Saw also some of the scheme that ran at Murphy. Mm -hmm. But can you just tell me about his performance in particular, how he kind of came back from those moments and how the offensive line graded out? Yeah, Cedric's still a young kid. You know, he's just a true sophomore. And, uh, you know, we, he did have a couple bad snaps early in the game. Got him on the sideline. Coach Finn got in his ear, gave him some encouragement, I guess you would say. And uh, he responded and played the rest, rest of the game very well. And so it was uh, – a situation where he, he got uh, you know got a little bit more motivation and, and uh, upped his level of play. Offensive line as a whole, I thought played exceptionally well. Uh, what was the second part of your question? Yeah, just how they graded out. Yeah, how they graded out. Yeah, they all graded out. Uh, as I recall, uh, I think three of them were in the 90s and two were in the high 80s. And so our goal is to have them all grade out 90 or above. You know that that would be ideal for us offensive line play wise, or winning winning level. And so. Uh, you know, and you don't rush for nearly 200 yards without very good offensive line play. And we were only sacked one time, so that's another uh, indicator of uh, how well the offensive line performed for us Saturday. And this will be one of the only questions for me as far as kicking goes. But where did you find this kicker again? And when did you know, <laughs> Kyle, that he was going to be perfect through this many games? Uh, okay. When did we find him? He, he sent a tape to us. Uh, I say us. Really came straight to Jay Hill. Um, I want to say not last summer, but the summer prior. And, uh, you know, he was a skier, obviously, and was on the, the Olympic uh, ski team or, or getting ready to be on the Olympic ski team and, and uh, joined the program. Was not really anything sensational when he first joined the program. You know, he's, he's gotten better since he got in our program. And that's a credit to Coach Hill and coaching him up and, and uh, helping him develop. And, uh, you know, we've had a feeling in fall camp that we may have stumbled upon a pretty good kicker. We had no idea for sure because he hadn't kicked in front of anybody ever at any level. And so there was a lot of unknowns in that respect. But uh, in spring ball, there really wasn't much separation. It wasn't until fall camp that he really started to pull away from the rest of the kickers. And we were thinking, hey, we might have a, a guy that's pretty good for us. And then as we start, as the season started to unfold, and he just made kick after kick after kick, and that's just continued. And so we're very excited about it. So we're no longer do we go to soccer fields for for uh, kickers, we go to the slopes <laughs> and try to try to find those guys. Coach, in these close games, uh, the team has, has remained fairly composed and confident. Um, can you talk about the team leadership this year as opposed to maybe years past, and, and, and how does that lead to the, to the remainder of the season? Well, the leadership this year has been outstanding. I think I've referenced that a lot in the first six weeks of the season, and the and it starts with Trevor Riley. He's the uh, the team leader and the guy that uh, really is the leader of the leaders. And 
met with the seniors. I mentioned that after the game. I had a meeting with the seniors last week. And there's, it's just a great group. They're a, they're a pleasure to coach. They're tough. They're competitive. They want to win in the worst way. And so that's been something that has really been uh, apparent through the first six games of the season. And we need that to continue. We expect it to continue. What do you see defensively from from Arizona? What do they do? Uh, Thirty three stack. I've been playing it for uh, well. It's ever, I think everywhere Rich Rod's been is is he's got the uh, the three three scheme going. Uh, very athletic. Got a really good linebacker, inside linebacker, really good corner. I haven't had a time to I haven't had a lot of time to spend uh, on their defense, but but uh, they're uh, they're good and they play a lot of quarters coverage, a little bit of zone pressure. Most of the pressure is five-man stuff, either zone pressure or what we call 50 uh, five-man pressure with man coverage behind it. But but they're active, give you a lot of different looks as far as uh, you know, linebackers moving around. And like I said, they got uh, some really good players over there. I know you've been pretty pleased with the kicking game, punt and kick game, but what do you got to do to improve kick coverage, obviously? Yeah, that's, the, that's the phase we haven't been pleased with, and we got to take a long, hard look at that. And uh, of course, last week we were playing against a, a premier kick returner in Montgomery. Our plan was to not let him touch the ball. He ended up touching two or three times, and we paid the price. So that was not due to any effort or any lack of effort on our part to keep it away from him because we tried. But uh, we got to get that fixed. And that right now is if you look at the football team in its entirety and say, where's your Achilles heel? It probably is the, the kickoff coverage unit right now. We got to get that addressed, and we will. Last thing for me, uh, going back to something you said earlier about the conference and quarterback play and things. I think there's eight quarterbacks right now on pace to go for over 3,000 yards right. passing. Just kind of your overall view on quarterback play right now in the Pac-12. Well, it's outstanding. And I don't know, as you mentioned, there's eight. You know, if you do the numbers and, and uh, you know, with what they've accomplished so far and what's left in the season, that's exactly what will happen is eight of them will go over 3,000 yards. First of all, I don't know if that's ever happened in any conference ever. Uh, but most importantly, we're very glad that our guys one of those eight. And so it's a, it's a quarterback full of very good co uh, quarter. It's a conference full of very good quarterbacks. And, uh, you know, it's just uh, the numbers they're putting up is, is really uh, outstanding right now. Coach, is, as good as Andy Phillips is putting the ball through the uprights, is there even a possibility that someone else might step in and, and kick off and put the ball out the back of the end zone? We've tried that. We, you know, we've worked uh, all the kickers in the program. We, uh, we're, we're searching for the the guy that uh, is able to do the, the best job of that, and it, right now it's Andy. And so it's not for a lack of uh, searching and, and giving other people a shot. It's just that uh, right now we don't have that guy that can pound it out of the back of the end zone with any consistency or any regularity. You've referenced that meeting last week. Is that was it a routine meeting, or was it was it called by you or, the, or by them? Or uh, it was called by me, and it's not really that out of character. We do that periodically through the season. I meet with different groups, the leadership council on occasion, the captains quite often, and uh, the seniors on on occasion. And so that's something that uh, you just go by feel. You know, when you when you think uh, you'd like to sit down with some of those guys and just get you know take their pulse and see what they're thinking. Coach, that was your 75th victory, I guess, as a coach. Did you celebrate that in any way, or did you even know that? <laughs> yeah, I went to In-N-Out and had a double-double, and that was the big, <laughs> that was the extent of it. But no, I didn't know that until one of my, we were at In-N-Out and did have a double-double. My brother, my brother, uh, one of my brothers mentioned that, and I, I had no idea. But yeah, so there you go. Kyle, I want to ask you about your friend Andy Reid and Alex Smith <laughs> being undefeated at, at the Chiefs. Uh, did you have a sense that they would be a good partnership? I did, and, and uh, I had conversation with Andy about that uh, potential move, and gave him uh, gave uh, Alex my 100% endorsement. And uh, it's been a good match; they're doing great. And by the way, Andy's a closet Ute, and uh, not a lot of people know that. But Andy Reid uh, wears Ute gear constantly, and he's he's a closet Ute. And actually, that wouldn't be a closet Ute if you wear your Ute gear constantly. But but. Uh, <laughs> Anyways, uh, very proud of those guys and what they're what they've accomplished, what they're doing there in Kansas City. Got another big win yesterday, and uh, couldn't be happier for two two guys that I really care a lot about. And would you say their personalities are kind of similar in some ways? I would. They're both both extremely intelligent, both uh, very even keeled, uh, no peaks and valleys, very very steady, and I think it's a very good match. And and uh, so far the the results have proven that.
<clears throat> Coach, after the Stanford-Washington game, there were some allegations about Stanford faking injuries. Just for you as a coach, to hear another coach come out publicly and make those kind of comments, do you sort of bristle at that? Is that the kind of thing that should not be brought out into the public, into the press? Uh, I really don't have a take on that. I, I've never been uh, associated with that in a game on either side of it. And so, um, I don't know, I, I guess that uh, I would have no comment on that. How about that? <laughs> Coach, can you talk a little bit about Anthony Denham and just how he's evolved into the, the passing game mm -hmm. for you guys? Made a couple of big catches for us, uh, contested catches on Saturday. So he's, he's continuing to contribute in that respect. His biggest contribution has been his blocking. He's a big, strong kid. He's 6'4 and about 220. And I mentioned the receiving uh, core blocking downfield for, uh, for Bubba and those guys that were on those swing routes. And he's the lead guy in that. He's a guy that really does a nice job and takes – and our whole receiving court, receiving court takes a great deal of pride in blocking, and that's something that, that we stress. What, you, what do you do when you don't have the ball in your hands is, is uh, extremely important, and those guys have really uh, embraced that, taken that to heart. Kyle, you're at the midway mark of the season. Can you just give an evaluation of where things sit at this point? I think we've done some good things this season. Obviously, we'd uh, choose to be undefeated. I mean, if we had, our, if we had a perfect world, but uh, you know, we've competed every week. I don't think we've, we've – uh, had a, a, a poor performance. You know, we haven't won every game, obviously, but I don't think we've had a game where we just say, hey, we just flat out didn't play well. And so that's been encouraging. Uh, the competitive nature of this team is, is uh, fun to be around, the way they compete and the way they, they care about what they're doing. And so, you know, we're four and two, and, and uh, you know, we've got the second half of the season coming up uh, this week, and we just need to try to keep things heading in the right direction. And last thing, Stanford being a very physical team, how did you guys come out of it health wise? I think we're pretty good, much better than in some of the other games of the season. And, and uh, you know, we'll see as we start to get back on the practice field. We don't practice on Mondays anymore. We use Mondays in the film room and the weight room. And uh, with the veteran guys, the, the developmental guys have a practice. But, but uh, we'll be able to have a better assessment tomorrow as to where some of these guys are. Coach, uh, one thing I want to point out to people is I, I think the intricacy of of what Travis Wilson is having to do in a given play. And mm -hmm. those sweep screens or the comet screens, there's a, there's a lot that goes into that. There is. Because as I watch the play, a lot of people might think, ah, oh, that's just, you know, that's just basic screen, throw to screen. But he's got to make a lot of decisions there. He does. And you put a lot uh, yeah. of weight in decision making on Travis on nearly every play he yeah. runs. There's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of ball handling that has to go on. You know, we fake the fly sweep and then throw the, throw the swing or, or fake the fly sweep, read the defensive end. Uh, for the read zone. I mean, there's there's a lot of reads that he is making on just about every run play or or on that swing screen, and uh, very his his mind and his decision making is very much like Alex Smith was able to do as far as in that in that regard. You know, Alex made great decisions. Now we're not running the option game that we ran when we had Alex. We had the triple uh, with the uh, the shovel option as well as the speed option. So that that's not a a, a part of what he's doing. But as far as the the zone read and uh, reading that defensive end on, on some of the fly sweep series. He's got a lot on his plate, and he has made very good decisions this year with that. 